as far and wide as the Nevada desert. But luckily for me, it's my job to round up all the hottest tech and gadgets. Think of me as your very own tech cowgirl. CES is 2.9 million square feet of exhibition space that's packed with some of the biggest brands in the world. It's all about putting the next generation of innovation on display and this year it seems that displays are taking centre stage. Case in point, Samsung have taken the way we watch telly and turned it on its head. If you usually watch your content on your mobile phone, then check out Samsung's Zero TV. Via Wi-Fi, you can cast your mobile content to the TV. So, for example, if I go into YouTube, you see the gadget shows there, I can be watching it vertically. Then let's say we want to go full screen, rotate the phone and the TV rotates as well. How cool is that? If a twistable TV isn't enough to get you frothing at the mouth, then their 8K offering with an edge, or rather lack of it, is sure to tickle your visual fancy. Samsung's latest 8K TV seems to be missing something, namely a bezel, because it is 99% all picture. But it's not just Samsung that are upping their 8K screen game this year. Sony's 8K offering analyzes light levels in your room and adjusts the picture accordingly, while LG have just released what they're calling Real 8K. LG claim that their 8K screens create clearer black and white lines because of its contrast modulation. And their much raved about rollable TV that emerged from the floor last year has been updated so it can now drop from the ceiling, but we still don't know when we can buy one. The buzz around foldables was immense before CES even began this year. Microsoft, Dell and Intel were all rumoured to be ready to launch the first PCs that could fold in half. But it's actually Chinese tech giant Lenovo that brought their finished product to the show. Now, we've covered foldable screens before, but I've never got my hands on a foldable PC, which is what this is. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Fold. It has a 13.3-inch OLED screen, and look at it. It folds absolutely seamlessly. So you can have it more of a book setup like this, but my favourite option is that you put it like that. It comes with this keyboard that magnetically clips in on the front, and when it's closed, that charges the keyboard as well. And then you can use it more of a laptop setup. It comes with 5G, Windows 10, and up to one terabyte of storage. And look how nifty it is if you want to take it away with you. Priced at two and a half grand, this is the world's first foldable PC to go on sale to us consumers. But computers aren't the only thing bent on getting our attention this year. Do you remember Razor phones back in the day where you could snap them shut to hang up on people? Well, it is back, but it's got a touchscreen makeover. Not only do you have a lovely touchscreen on the front there, but also bendable screen technology means you have a beautiful screen right there. Perfect for when you want to hang up on people, but also when you want to take your phone out and about in a tiny little pocket. But it's not just mobiles and computers that are getting a tech overhaul. Action cameras have started rocking optional extras too. Insta360 have just released a brand new camera called the One R, which is an action camera with a modular design. So either you can go for a traditional action camera or you can swap out the lens for a 5.7K lens or you could go for a 360 lens. And the beauty of a 360 lens is that it can go into the app select your perfect angle afterwards, and you can even do things like track and pan. As ever, cars are big news this year, but the biggest must be the collaboration between Mercedes and James Cameron with their Avatar-inspired wheels. This futuristic machine is steered by a controller that rises up out of the central console. The AVTR, as it's known, is powered by a graphene-based organic battery, which means you can compost it once it's dead. But it's not just established car manufacturers getting in on the electric car trend. Electronics giant Sony announced their very first electric concept car, called the Vision S, but I'm most excited to get behind the wheel of this electric pickup. This off-road electric vehicle Rivian is riddled with Alexa. You can open doors, change the dashboard, heat my seat up, even open the bonnet, but just by using your voice. Alexa, open left side. Rivian will integrate Alexa into 100,000 of his electric delivery trucks that are set to debut at the end of the year. 
Home Fitness has had a turbo tech injection too. Amazfit have launched their home studio, a treadmill with a 43-inch wall display, two speakers over which a trainer can give you motivation. The motion recognition camera analyzes your body's movements whilst you're running and it gives you tips and feedback on how to up your fitness game. And ASICs have launched their as yet unnamed smart trainers. So the trainers that I'm currently wearing at the moment has a sensor in the sole and it's basically recording all about my run so I can work out how many steps I'm taking, how fast I'm running but also really importantly the angle of how I'm hitting the ground. These new smart shoes are due to be released later in the year and will come with a companion app that can offer up all the important analytics in one easy to read screen. So I finished my run and then all that data that the sensors have collected have been transferred over to the app. So I have an overall score of B, but really helpfully it tells you things like how I can improve, how I've become more efficient, and it gives me things like my pace, and also how my foot is actually striking the ground. You can imagine, if you do a long run with this, you'd build up a really detailed picture of your exact running style. After walking about 30,000 steps today and running half a mile, all in the name of gadget testing, I'm about ready for bed. But not before I've brushed my teeth. Big smiles here in Vegas, especially at the Colgate stand, because they have just released their brand new smart toothbrush. Now this toothbrush comes with a sensor on the top there, which detects exactly how much plaque you have on your teeth. If it lights up blue, then you need to keep brushing. If it's white, then it means they're sparkling clean. All that information is then passed on to this app, which tells you exactly how much you've covered in your mouth, the duration you've brushed for, and if you've missed out on any teeth.